thank you, chairpersons, and thank you, Diabetes India, for this workshop, which is very much needed, actually. And uh, what I'm going to do is that I'll give the initial thought on adult vaccination. And it will be followed by three important vaccinations, pneumococcal, influenza, as well as Zoster vaccine. So what is the need for adult vaccination? We all have realized uh, recently the pandemic has real, made us realize actually about the concept of vaccination in adults as well. We did try to speak on COVID vaccination. What we realized actually the adults started talking about vaccination for their own vaccination as well. So not only the healthcare providers, as well as the person, the adult person, he is coming to the healthcare provider asking for vaccination, if any. So though COVID was not good for the society, for the mankind, but it did taught a little bit about vaccination. So it is the most cost effective strategies available in public health. And it does protect the vaccinated individual from developing a potentially serious disease. And not only that, it helps protect the community by reducing the spread of infectious disease. But do adults need vaccine? Do they really need it? Because what healthy adults understand that they are immune to everything, they probably don't need vaccine. They know that the child, their child, or the babies, the kids, the old people, they need it, or those who are at poor health. But probably they, healthy adults, probably don't need it. They rather have not heard about the vaccination which are made for adults, or that are needed for adults, and about some diseases which actually affects the adults. Also, the healthcare providers are also responsible because probably they have not got recommendation, they are not giving recommendation to the adult uh, uh, patients about vaccination. And adult vaccination services and beyond influenza and pneumonia may not be offered by all healthcare providers. And this is a common fact we have seen in our clinics out. Vaccination are increasing offered now at work sites and for travel abroad. So this we all know. When we are traveling outside, probably the Russia comes and here you have a special section on vaccination which has to be filled up by the healthcare provider and that is when they know that vaccine is required. So, yes, adults need vaccination. They need vaccination, as I said, to protect against number of common and serious diseases. Protection from some childhood vaccines may not last long enough to protect the adults. And there may be other diseases that adults are at risk due to occupation, age, lifestyle, travel, etc. So it is in our best interest as adults to take charge of our own prevention, preventive healthcare by learning about recommended vaccines, seeking them out, or encouraging others to get So again, I'll be going through this National Foundation for Infectious Disease uh, guidance or what they said, what are the reasons why the adult need. And these are important. These are all taken from this particular course. But as because they're so important, everyone needs to know. Disease knows no age. Young and healthy people can get sick. So vaccines are recommended for adults about Many adults may not, no longer be protected from the vaccine which they have received in childhood or were, it, were not even immunized as a child. So booster dose for some of the vaccines which they have been immunized in the child need to be recommended to remain protected. Getting immunized protects not just you, but other vulnerable people in our community. Extremely important as well. So babies who are too young to be vaccinated or older grandparents or family members and co-workers who can spread the germs to others. So these are the groups where you have to protect by getting vaccinated. Some newer vaccines are just for adults and teens. Singles is a good example of a painful disease with possible lifelong effects. One can be avoided by getting vaccinated. 
HPV vaccine can prevent cervical cancer in young women and genital warts, both sexes. There are specific age group that where vaccination, particularly, they have not been exposed. Adults are in general too busy to spend time being sick. Being sick can be a huge burden on them because they are the responsible uh, person in that family. The activities are important, they need to travel, they cannot get sick. And many adults with health conditions are highly vulnerable to vaccine preventable disease, like pregnant women, those with asthma, heart, lung disease, or diabetes. HIV weakened immune system or liver. Further, though it's a good point, we are living longer than what we used to do two decades back. But as we age, our immune system gets weakened, making us even more vulnerable to it. Older adults are at a high risk of contracting developing serious complications due to influenza, invasive pneumococcal disease. What we realized in COVID that yes, those who are older, elderly with comorbid conditions, they were vulnerable to mortality and Morbidity. Vaccine preventable diseases are expensive because once you get infected with a vaccine preventable disease, probably that is going to cost you financially because there is a loss of uh, work days. As for example, adults who get hepatitis A may have to forego work for more. Vaccines are recommended by the health departments. Vaccines are safe. But vaccine preventable diseases kill tens of thousands of adults every year. Adults can contact their local health department for information about vaccine coverage. Similar as to diet and exercise where we propagate to each and every individual, vaccine is also an important point to be, to be considered or should be, uh, should be uh, inducted in our lifestyle so that we stay healthy. So these are the 10 major reasons why adult needs vaccine clearly outlined in this particular source uh, from National Foundation for Infectious Disease. Now, though we say it's very important that adults need vaccination, but there are challenges to that as well. What are the challenges? Lack of knowledge, as I already said, both patients and providers. We have, it, I mean, uh, if, if we are truthful to us ourselves, probably healthcare providers do not have enough knowledge uh, propagate this idea of adult vaccination. Inadequate funding for vaccines, inadequate administration in public programs, poor public health and private infrastructure for vaccine delivery, lack of availability of vaccine, high cost of vaccine. Most important probably is the high cost of vaccine. Actually, even a very important vaccine like influenza and pneumococcal, we cannot give to each and every. So, uh, Probably it's not due to the infrastructure issue, which probably has been taken care of in recent times, but it's more because of the cost of vaccine and the lack of knowledge. These are the adult vaccines, which has to be initiated into required group, in the required age group or required comorbid conditions. And they are influenza, uh, tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, singles, uh, pneumonia, pneumococcal, meningococcal. These are the five major ones. And then in certain group of population, the MMR, HPV, chickenpox, hepatitis A, and hepatitis B. So uh, behind whatever we are talking about adult vaccination, one thing I realized that probably uh, last three decades or so, the respiratory disease outbreak has become more rampant. Almost every four or five years, we are getting some kind of pandemics. But the first one, which 1918, and thereafter, after a long gap, we had these outbreaks. And they are very frequent. They're coming every four or five years, thereby actually having increased mortality as well morbidity in our society. And these respiratory disease outbreaks have had huge casualties and fatalities and impact a large geographic across the globe. So this we have realized, and these are the various pandemics which have occurred, Ebola, HIPA, SARS, MERS, and COVID. So <clears throat> the most important and the latest one, obviously, is COVID-19. And this is still ongoing, but definitely because of the various variants, it keeps on changing. And not only that, the vaccination need to change as well. Elderly and comorbid patients with during respiratory outbreaks leads to higher risk of infections as well as poor clinical outcome. 
This study from China, the first study, has clearly outlined the fact that the comorbid condition along with the age group, which is more susceptible, is the elderly age group. And the comorbid conditions which is very common in our uh, population, whether it's hypertension, diabetes, the C, uh, cardiovascular disease, or so on. So basically, when you have these comorbid conditions in our adult population and they are not vaccinated, there is a decreased chance of poor outcome. So uh, uh, the major important determinants which are there for initiating vaccination, obviously, along with the usual subscribed vaccination is the health conditions, the job, the international travel, vaccines you have received or may not received at the child, as a child. So these are the vaccines which need to be given as per the factors responsible. Now, <clears throat> this is the ACIP uh, adult immunization schedule. This is age-based recommendation. These are the various vaccines which have been recommended and as per the age from 19 onwards, Till 60, there is one group, and thereafter, above 60, there's another group, or above 65, as they say, uh, another group. So basically, these are the various vaccines which are uh, uh, need to be given. The yellow one are the compulsory ones, and the blue one are the, uh, the recommended if some risk factors is available. Because there will be talk on these different vaccines later, so I'm not going into it. But one thing is important, though there are other medical conditions or other conditions which determine which are the vaccine which should be given or which are contraindicated very clearly shown in this particular slide. And one can actually see this slide and get an idea about which are the vaccines which are to be given in different age groups, say for diabetes, heart disease, and the chronic lung disease, the yellow, if you see uh, Tdap, HPV, varicella, uh, uh, HPV, varicella, Joster, MMR, all these can be given. The one such group, where almost everything can be given is the diabetes group, excepting those where live attenuated vaccines not be given in immunocompromised. And this is the 2023 ACP. The, uh, the ACP has brought out small changes by introducing the COVID vaccination as an important primary vaccination adults, where two to three doses of primary series and booster need to be given as required or as a, uh, 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 scheduled by the different uh, uh, countries and globally. And if you see the, uh, uh, though it will be spoken about the major influenza vaccine is the in inactivated influenza vaccine, influenza recombinant vaccine. These are the two which has to be given one dose annually, 19 years onwards. That's important vaccine. And then if you go to the pneumococcal vaccine again, uh, is a clear cut, you have a risk factor, a comorbid condition, probably 1924 should be given. Uh, even if it is given, one uh, PCV13 has been given, it should be followed by PCV15 or PCV20 in US, but here we have, uh, it can be followed by PCV, uh, PP, uh, PPSV23. We don't have uh, PPSV20 or PCV20. So uh, we are giving PPS23, that is polysaccharide vaccine. So this is how actually the vaccine schedule has uh, recently come out by the ACP and uh, one need to look into it and again according to our group, uh, our, our country, we should try to uh, recommend the vaccination accordingly. So is, this is again according to the medical condition, what we saw initially there's just small changes about they have introduced a COVID one. They have in introduced the quadrivalent uh, influenza vaccine as the major uh, influenza vaccine now rather than the trivalent. But whatever is available, you should give it. It's not that we should wait for the quadrivalent to be available and then uh, not give it. Whatever is available, you should give it. And then uh, the major uh, hepatitis B, there is a small kind of uh, changes which are have, which have recently available and some of them are not recommended. So they have been outlined here. and. Uh, Otherwise, uh, more or less, they are same. So COVID vaccine, again, is, uh, it's a voluntary stuff still now. It's not compulsory. It's advisable to receive the complete schedule. It's an ongoing research. Every uh, because of the variants on now, we keep on having a newer COVID vaccine coming in. Now, this being a diabetic conference, I'll just take two slides on this. For vaccination for adults with diabetes, 
Yes, COVID-19, yes, all adults are recommended to get a primary series, plus the booster doses when eligible. Hepatitis A, you may need this vaccine if you have a specific uh, risk factor, otherwise uh, not uh, recommended. So it is usually given two doses, 16 to 18 months apart. Hepatitis B, all adults younger than 60 are recommended to complete two or three doses of series of hepatitis B. This is I'm talking specific to diabetes or similar kind of comorbid condition. And even if you are 60 years or older, you or your healthcare provider need to decide whether they need to have this hepatitis B vaccine or, uh, or not. Now, hemophilus influenza type B, maybe some patient with certain higher risk conditions, for example, lack of functioning strain. These are the group of patients we need to be given. HPV, yes, they should be given. Uh, this vaccine should be given if you are 26 years or younger. Adult above 27 through 45 may be also considered a vaccination if your healthcare provider thinks that this is a susceptible group of population. Influenza, yes, every year it needs to be given. MMR, you, maybe you need at least one dose of MMR vaccine if you are born in 1957 or later. You may also need a second dose if people with weakened immune system should not get MMR vaccine. That's again important. Meningococcal, maybe you can, uh, you may need this vaccine if you have one of the several health conditions. For example, if you do not have a function, or also boosters if your risk is ongoing. And meningococcal B, you may need this. Again, similarly, you must have certain health other health condition which. Uh, necessitates the, uh, uh, giving this meningococcal B in diabetic population. Uh, tetanus, diphtheria, whooping cough, yes, if you have not received a dose of Tdap during the, your lifetime, you need to get a Tdap sort now. After that, every 10 years, you should have it, a booster dose. Very similar chickenpox, maybe if you have never had with chickenpox, never ever been vaccinated or vaccinated, but only received one dose, then if your healthcare provider thinks wise enough that you need taking this vaccine, should be given. Joster, if you are 18, 19 years or older, have a weakened immune system or are 50 or older, you should get a two-dose series of Tingris. I think it will be further deliberated by my colleague later in the day. But what is more important that you should understand what is the contraindication and precautions as far as vaccination is concerned. Mostly there is hardly any uh, contraindication, but one should be knowing about the immune statins where you should be careful about the live vaccines. Uh, otherwise, you can, most of the cases, you can give them. But uh, precaution, yes, any acute illness, if the patient is having it, that's the time when you should not give the uh, vaccine. So how do we improve the adult immunization covering? That's very important, it's critical. So improving adult vaccination coverage in India could help break the chain of infection, reduce the burden of disease among patients with chronic conditions, and prevent the wider community spread. So better coverable result is obviously reduce incidence rates, reduce hospital admission, health costs, and quality of life. The immunization standards were deployed to give healthcare providers input vaccination rates. Bottom line is that it's important to give vaccine as recommended to get the maximum benefit, not only prevent the severity of the illness, also to prevent the illness as well. So setting our own standards, so as a community, we do encourage adults to get immunized. You need to create an environment. You need to propagate the information. And Ryan Dwight, remind the family, loved ones, and co-workers about the importance of being up-to-date about vaccination. And that is where the importance of adult vaccination. Thank you.